This problem involves a mid-size bridge truss. The reason I regard this truss as a mid-size because in addition to larger triangular cells, there is a substructure of cells which is particularly instrumental in handling local loads. You may think about this problem as a problem associated with a moving load, and in this case, the load is at the center of the truss, and it is represented by three equal forces of magnitude P. Our task is to determine the forces in the bars CD, GE, and DG. I will solve this problem using free body diagram for both joints and sections, and I will start with the simplest bar. This is the bar CD. For this bar, it is sufficient to consider the free body diagram for the joint C and the force equilibrium equation along the y-axis immediately gives us that the bar CD is in tension and the magnitude of the tension is P. Next, let me consider the free body diagram for the joint E. Uh, let me remind you that our task is to find the force in GE. Now, the free body diagram here involves five forces, but due to symmetry, this force and this force are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, and the forces FDE and FD prime E also have the same magnitude and the direction is shown. In general, what we see is that the vertical components coincide while the horizontal components of these forces are opposite. And this was the case for these two forces. At any rate, the only non-trivial equilibrium equation for this joint is sum of the forces on what? You can convince yourself that symmetry trivializes the force equilibrium equation along the x-axis. This equilibrium equation gives us the relationship between the force FEG in the bar of interest and in the bar DE. Let me proceed next and find the force in the bar DE. To this end, I will look at the joint at D. The joint at D involves two collinear bars. And then it involves the bars CD and the bar DE. The free body diagram looks like this. And in this free body diagram, we have three unknowns. And we can write only two non-trivial equations because some of the moments about D is trivially equal to zero. But if we choose the x-axis along the direction perpendicular to the bar, then we can obtain an equation that connects the force in the bar CD and the force in the bar DE. And that's the equilibrium equation. And from this equation, we obtain that the force in the bar D is compression equal to P over square root of 2. And now I can go back and evaluate the force in the bar EG simply by substituting 
the value of FDE in the equation obtained previously, and I obtain that the force in EG is tension to P. Next, let me focus on this bar. To analyze this bar, I would like to use the method of sections. And uh, as a preliminary step, I will determine the reactions at A and B by drawing a free body diagram for the entire beam. We can claim that from symmetry, AX is equal to zero, and AY and BY have to split the load, which is total 3P. And uh, so that each AY and BY are equal to 3 half B. Next, let me consider a section that will help me analyze the force in the bar, which I show now in yellow. I also have, have here a little diagram that magnifies the geometry, right? So that's the cut. And this cut, as you can see here, goes through four bars. And one of them, of course, is the bar of interest, DG. And the crucial part of this cut is that the force in the bar DE has been already determined. And it is compression, P over square root of 2. And so the forces in blue, which are unknowns, I show as tensile, but the force P over square root of 2, I show as compression. Now, all I have to do is to project the forces along the y-axis, which gives me this equation. And as a result, I obtain that the force in the bar dg is compression square root of 2 peak. 